G'day, David Smith here for Australian Video Camera Magazine and today I'm going to talk about the Miller Air tripod made of aluminium and I'm going to show you some of its features and strengths and just a couple of little weaknesses but mostly strengths. This is the case it comes with, a nice padded case, good to look after your investment. And here's the tripod, it's a good solid tripod with nice rubber grips right down the side, easy to grab, a little clip to hold the legs together while you're carrying it, and it's got a nifty invention on the tips here, there's a rubber boot for each of the legs, but if you're going to work on hard ground or concrete you can just screw that down very easily and you get three little steel points to, to work with, I'll put them back up there for now. Um, the legs have got very large, very grippy uh, controllers here, so you just open that up like that and the legs just drop down really fast, very easily, like that. And they lock well, they lock up very nicely. So there's the basic tripod. It's great because it's got three positions for the legs. You can have the legs like this, or you can raise that and move them out to the first position, have all three of them fairly wide, or you can go even lower and go right out to that, and it goes right down near ground level. So it's a very versatile tripod in that sense. Um, it's got a fluid head, a 75 millimeter fluid head here, which you adjust to the right angle to get the little spirit level to be zeroed. And I just have to adjust the handle. The pan handle comes up like so. And then I can remove the plate. There's a balancing position here. You can move the plate backwards and forwards till it's balanced nicely. Um, and then you press this little button on the other side and it releases the plate to attach it to the camera, which I'll do in a moment. But the, one of the things I don't like about this tripod is this funny little plastic thing that comes with it to stop the screw falling out of the back of the plate. It's okay when it's on the camera and fitted, but it's a really um, inferior design in my view. Uh, there's got to be a better way to do this. Come on, Millie, you can do better than this. Um, we'll see what they come up with in the, in the next version. So I'm just going to fit my little Canon XA10 camera onto the tripod. So I'll put this here like this. And then to screw it down, I'll use my trusty Swiss Army knife screwdriver. Screw that down. And then that just slides into place and you lock it in a position there, and you can slide it backwards and forwards to get the right um, balance for the camera, especially with heavier cameras. And there are two positions on the spring-loaded counterweight here for the tilt action. Position one is for light cameras, and so you've got very little resistance there at all. And then position two down here, uh, you've got much more resistance, which is better for a heavy camera or a longer lens. But for this little camera, I'll just use it on number one. So that's set to go. Just release the pan action. The action is very, very smooth. It's delightful, actually. Um, the only hesitation I have is that there's no actual control of the friction level. On other tripods I've used, and on the old Miller wooden tripods, you can always adjust the friction um, to get just the right balance for the task at hand. You can't do that here, and I wish they did have another little knob on the side to adjust that, but it's not there, so you just have to live with it. You can sort of adjust it with the tension on this thing, but it's not actually that good. It bites. Um, it's better just to leave it right off and just use the fluid head, but it is really good for, for most um, sort of actions. So now I'm going to show another nice feature of this camera, really nice feature actually, which is that down here on the side, there's a little screw thread, a little quarter inch 20 uh, thread socket here. I can attach a little arm here which I've bought specially from video guys and it's got a male thread on each end which makes it very versatile. The th retaining ring here has got a little o-ring in it so it gets a nice firm grip and 
with a bit of luck it'll just find the thread and there we go this is a small rig additional arm for it's like a mini magic arm actually so if I bring that to about there so now that I've got that fitted I can now fit a monitor to the side here, a big monitor, which gives me a terrific uh, sharp view of what I'm shooting and much better for framing and focusing. Um, this is a V-Gear monitor which goes up to full high definition, 1920 by 1080 and it's got an internal battery so it runs itself beautifully for hours, like about four hours. I'll just have to lower this down a bit because one of the things you have to watch out for is that your camera is clear of the uh, monitor when you're tilting. It, it moves with the camera when you're panning, like this, but when you tilt, it, it doesn't move. And so the camera could, could brush against the side of that, and you have to avoid that. So I'll put the camera back. There we go. And... Ideally, you need a short HDMI to mini HDMI. I've got a longer one, but it's a bit, a bit long for the purpose, but that's okay for today. Um, I just plug this into the back of the, the monitor. The monitor needs to be very tightly secured. I'll just check that we're clear there. Yeah, we are clear. And then this goes into the HDMI out on the camera, like that. There it is. And now, with a bit of luck, if I turn the V-gear on, It'll recognise the HDMI signal and we'll have a nice picture on here. And that's Yeah, there it is, it's working. If I look around to the view, I can see out over the bay. And it's not quite level, so I better use my spirit level here to level the head. That's a really great feature. Now it's level. So there's my little viewfinder down here. So when I tested this tripod with this little camera, um, I found it to be absolutely excellent. It's got a lovely uh, fluid action, uh, very, very smooth, incredibly easy to control your pans and tilts. Um, it folds up really easily. The case is great to work with. I wondered how it might go with a very long lens, and so I used my Z1 uh, Sony tape camera with a 1.8 times adapter on it, which took the focal length up to 700 millimeters. And as you'll see in the next section of this review, um, it didn't do that well. It's just a little bit wobbly at the full end of that incredibly long focal length of 700 mils. So I wouldn't recommend it for long lens work, uh, but the tripod is great for everyday general use at wider focal lengths. So let's see how this goes on full telephoto. Um, it's a 10 times zoom lens, so I'm going in now a fair way onto those boats. And it's stable, that's fine. It pans very nicely. You've got to be super careful, of course, at that focal length. Um, but just watch this. If I bump it, it jitters like crazy. So, and you can't do anything about that. If I, if I lock the pan and tilt, it still does it, even at that focal length. So if I take it out to the 700 mils, it's a, it's a fairly seriously wobbly tripod at the, the long end of the lens. So just to be aware of that. Just um, do it one more time yep. at the full length. Yep. Just adjust my exposure to get a okay. proper view. Okay. Okay. See your hand first. Yep. Right. Do you want me to zoom in or yeah, repeat that bit? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I won't talk it through. I'll just do it. Oh, I'll, I'll talk it through to help. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> so let's see how this performs at uh, full telephoto on this. Canon XA10. We'll go in on these boats and um, you can see that it's very stable just sitting there for a steady shot. It's actually quite good for, if I loosen that off, it's quite good for panning. You can pan very carefully. You've got to be super careful obviously at this focal length. There goes a, a boat through the shot. We'll just check that boat. There we go. But watch this. If I lock off the pan and tilt knobs just watch every time I touch it I get a really bad jitter in the screen um, so you have to be just super careful 
see the way it jitters like this it's just the tiniest little tap and it's jittering so it's just not strong enough to um you can see it on the other monitor too uh, it's just not quite robust enough as a tripod to handle the very long lens on this camera <laughs> These shots were taken with my Sony Z1 HDV camera fitted with a Raynox x 1.8 tele-extender giving a total focal length of 700mm. With the camera mounted on the Miller Air tripod the results were very good making it possible to track birds in flight from a huge distance away. In this still you can barely see the row of birds so I've circled them to make it clearer. With the tripod stationary and keeping my hands clear of the camera and pan handle, it's possible to pull in some great shots. However, the slightest bump of the camera or pan handle resulted in a visible shake in the shot. Just out of interest, I switched the camera and tele lens to my decades old Miller Viscosity Drag wooden cinema tripod to see how sensitive it would be to bumps. The result was very clear. The wooden Miller tripod, which is much heavier overall, was significantly less sensitive to bumps as you can see in these shots. Here I'm tapping the panhandle with the Miller Air tripod. And here I'm doing the same thing on the wooden Miller tripod. In fact I had to hit the panhandle quite firmly to even get a visible shake when using the wooden tripod. The conclusion is very clear. The Miller Air tripod is superb for all normal shooting at reasonable focal lengths but it's nowhere near as good as its older, heavier relative when it comes to long lens shooting. I'll never forget filming the beginning of a documentary about a blue whale that beached near Lawn in Victoria in 1992. On Tuesday the 5th of May 1992, the body of an 18.7 metre long whale washed ashore at Cathedral Rock near Lawn on Victoria's spectacular southern coast. I was using another wooden Miller tripod with my Araflex 16BL film camera on the headland overlooking the beach and the dead whale. All the major TV news crews were there filming with beta cams on fiberglass or aluminium tripods, but when they spotted me with my rig, they all gathered round yelling, wow, a wooden Miller. Can I have a go? Nothing pans like a Miller. It was an unrehearsed and spontaneous accolade to the brilliance of Robert Eric Miller, who patented the fluid head for tripods in 1946. He then invented the Miller viscosity drag system in 1954, which featured the revolutionary and much-loved variable drag system. These Sydney-built systems were brilliant then, and remain so today. It's a really well-made tripod, a typical Miller. It's beautifully constructed. It's going to last forever. And for $1,200 for the whole rig, it's incredibly good value too for uh, such a well-built piece of uh, kit.